Hello, my name is Sam Holliday, and my topic was on the Qin Dynasty tomb. My interest for this topic comes from Chen Qing Huang's belief in the afterlife and the extents he went to make sure that he was prepared to enter the afterlife, along with the mysteries and secrets that are still inside the tomb, discovered and undiscovered. And all of the things that we can learn from the discovery and the contents that lie inside the tomb. Chen Shi Huang was the founder of the Qin Dynasty, and although it was shortly lived, only lasting 15 years, it had a great impact on the country. That is because the Qin Dynasty was the first to rule over a unified imperial China. Before becoming emperor, Chen Shi Huang was the king of the Qin state during an explosive time known as the Warring State Period. With massive armies, he was able to overpower the six remaining independent kingdoms of the Warring State Period and unify China in 221 BC, putting an end to the centuries of political turmoil, constant war, and endless bloodshed. Chen Shi Huang ruled by control, fear, and punishment. His harsh regime followed the philosophy of legalism which was based on the idea that people are more inclined to do wrong than right because they are motivated by their self-interest. Eventually, the emperor banned all other philosophies such as Confucianism and dynamism that flourished during the Warring State period and ordered the burning of texts that did not support the legalistic views. It is said that he may have even executed writers, philosophers, and scholars and to silence the opposing voices. Unsurprisingly, the emperor's actions attracted many enemies, and several assassination attempts were made on his life. The emperor spent the last years of his life in a bizarre pursuit to find the elixir of life so that way he could live forever. Things didn't quite work out exactly as he would want them to in the end, but his actions certainly immortalized him as one of China's greatest rulers. The Qin Dynasty was one of the shortest in Chinese history, but was one of the most important. It was marked by a strong sense of unification, critical, technological, and cultural innovations. In Chen Qi Huang's uh, pursuit to find the elixir of life, he was uh, ingesting small portions of mercury, which was said to help extend his life, but in the end is what did him in. Even though he failed to conquer death, the emperor still had grand plans for his afterlife. In bid to secure his position as cosmic ruler, he commissioned an entire kingdom to accompany him in the afterlife. But this underground kingdom came out at a considerably human cost. A large number of human remains were found across at the emperor's burial site, and historical documents record that thousands of officials were killed and thousands of craftsmen were buried alive to keep the secret of the tomb as location. Chen Qing Huang ordered the construction of his tomb almost immediately after becoming the first emperor of China. This was a typical burial practice to ensure that the tomb would be ready in time for the passing of the emperor. The images that I chose show you what the aerial view was uh, of the tombs when discovered along with uh, its surrounding areas and what it was said to look like before and what the inside of the tomb holding the remainders of the emperor was said to look like. Now the portion of the tomb that now the portion of the tomb that holds the remains of the emperor has yet to be excavated due to the high levels of mercury and it is said that there is a river of mercury that flows through it along with booby traps that were well preserved and are still functioning such as crossbows mounted to the walls. If you look at the map up in the right hand corner, you can see the word Terracotta Army. This was the location of the warriors when they were discovered. The tomb was accidentally discovered in 1974 when a farmer was digging for a well and accidentally came across several ceramic figures of warriors. The discovery gave us an unparalleled insight to his empire and the discipline and obedience and also the military might that he had. Um, the part of the tomb that had been excavated, there was thousands of sculptures uh, of warriors in full armor standing in battle formation and the warriors were life-size and most were about six feet tall the sculptors the sculptures weighed on about 600 pounds each and each warrior had its own unique characteristics so with facial features hairstyles clothing and positions 
As uh, the discovery quickly gained national attention, an archaeological investigation to reveal three large underground chambers, referred to as pits, containing shattered fragments of terracotta warriors. These life-size and lifelike uh, ceramic figures depicted warriors uh, with every detail of their dress skillfully rendered and uh, still bearing traces uh, of original paint uh, of the time of discovery. The terracotta warriors looked unlike any tomb figures that had been known before. What was even more interesting is that pits 1, 2, and 3 were just a small part of a much larger tomb complex of the first emperor. Among these warriors were also horses and bronze chariots which gave us a significant insight on what their traveling style was during the time, along with their incredible craftsmanship in order to make these very intricate designs for the life-size chariots, along with um, horses that were domesticated. And we know this because they were fitted with saddles, so that way individuals could ride them. And they were also fitted with reins, so that way they could be attached to the chariots. There was also a lot of bronze weaponry found in, in the tombs as well. Many of the, the weapons found were crossbows and swords. This gave us significant insight onto their bronze age and the use of bronze in a large portion of culture. And the way that they were preserved inside of the tombs in conclusion, looking closer at the terracotta armies, soldiers, and bronze chariots, so we learned a lot about what life might have been like during the Qin Dynasty. And we get significant insight on his infantry, as we can see his archers and the cavalry and the chariots. We can learn about how they dressed and what type of hairstyles they had and what type of weapons they used. And we learned what type of paints and pigments were being used during the time as well. And we can also see their bronze work and the knowledge and they had to create these life-like and lifestyles um, chariots and warriors and horses and that uh, they were far more advanced in their society with the domestication of the animals uh, such as the horses that were fitted with saddles. There's still so much that can be learned from what is inside of the tombs, discovered and undiscovered, and hopefully in the future we will be able to have the technology to enter the tomb to see if there really is a lake of mercury surrounding the emperor's remains.